I started hanging out at the rehearsal studio alone, recording a crazy amount of demos. I had a go at playing the drums for the first time, which I loved instantly, even though it sounded pretty wonky. After a couple of years, I had recorded enough demos to start putting an album together. Now I needed a live band. Whenever I see these guys today, it really brings back some good times. Found my day by a riverside See these fingers have been flipping all kinds again We practiced twice a week for a few years and in between practices I would usually be preparing more stuff for the next practice. I often think about how privileged I've been to have guys like these put in all those hours for my music and ambitions. We played a few gigs, mainly in and around Oslo, before we headed for Larsville, a studio in Stugedal, to record my debut album. Marte Valle was working with Paul on her debut album when we arrived at the studio. Hello boys. What are you doing over there? Dishes. Dishes? It's rock and roll history in the making. Paul is from the north. He's one of those guys that gets things done, a real Mr. Fix-It. With a good ear for sound, I might add. He was a really great fit for me in the band and ended up engineering, mixing and co-producing my first two albums. This was also my first time as a producer with other musicians involved. Anyway, finally I was recording my songs in a real studio with real people and real equipment and real coffee. After a few takes, new methods began to take form. I had just started a little label called the Tooth Fairy Label with uh, two mates and a dentist called Guy. Tadja and Klaus came up to Stugedal to listen through what we'd been up to in the studio and it got pretty wet for a dry summer's night. The band was in the studio for a couple of weeks before they headed back to Oslo. I stayed behind for another week or so myself to record the rest of the album. Marte also came back to finish her album that weekend and we recorded a song together at some point I believe but I have no idea where or how it went which is pretty unfortunate. Yeah, 
After everyone had left, I spent my hangover writing and recording this track that kind of came out of nowhere and ended up being on the album. The album got some good reviews and people actually started to notice what I was up to a little bit. For my second album, Shrink the City to a Light, I went back to Larshville again. Just me, Paul and Alfred the Dog. I played every instrument myself this time, except for a couple of tracks that Paul laid down, plus I introduced a horn section to my music for the very first time. Exciting. You really want to Shud and Bendik had come up to Stugadolm from Oslo to record horns on one track only, Silk. We enjoyed it so much that I spent the whole night arranging horns for almost every other song left on the album. Shud and Bendik barely had time to record everything before they had to head back to Oslo the next day. And I'm really happy they did. My second album got some good reviews and even more people noticed what I was up to. Two was looking pretty bright, to be honest. Our little label was getting out there a bit, and I was about to sign with the booking agency. Two singles from the album were listed on NRK Petre. Three songs were on the soundtrack for the movie The Orange Girl, Appelsin Pekin. There was a new manager in town too, Martin. That's when I got the honour of supporting Leonard Cohen at Bislett Stadium in Oslo. Man, what a day that was. Meanwhile, back at the booking agent's office, because of a sudden crash in the world economy, it was decided that I could now forget about touring anywhere with my band. I had to start thinking about hitting the road solo, and I'll tell you, I fucking hated the idea. So... 
I went to Africa instead. <laughs>